I come to a category which cannot be proven in this exhibition, but it's a very dangerous category, and that category is during the period when people applied for proxy. We don't know that contrary to practice, in a number of places, biometrics of those who were applying for the proxy were not taken. They were not taken. They were not taken. And we have raised this issue at IPAC more than two months ago. To date, the EC has not taken action on it. Our study of the register, since they gave it to us alone, we have identified 50,000 dead people on the register. We are still picking out the dead people. When you allow for proxies to be applied for, without taking biometrics, you are entertaining the possibility of people voting for dead people in future. Talk. We call for a full-scale investigation. And our preference is for Parliament to do it. We are not saying that Parliament has all the technical work with her to prosecute that investigation. But Parliament can co-opt. Parliament can bring on board technical expertise. If Parliament fails us, as Parliament has failed us since April, then our second line of action is to ask the international community, UNDP, ECOWAS, AU, USAID, and the rest, to step in already. They've stepped in, they are engaging us behind the scenes and all. They should step in and ensure a full-scale forensic audit of the EC's register and also its IT systems. Because the kind of discrepancies that we are seeing are not discrepancies that mere exhibition will be able to address. Has the EC has the EC responded to your um, 26th of August letter? Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, no. Even though we demonstrated that, look, we have an urgent and important matter to be discussed, and particularly as the EC itself failed to provide the registers to us part of the election and only provided it less than 12 hours to the exhibition exercise, ahead of the exhibition exercise, only less than 12 hours to the exhibition exercise, one would have thought that they would have prioritized this request for a meeting. We hope they are not thinking that they will be calling us to come for adjudication so that we will use adjudication to address this plethora of discrepancies that we have seen. Look, let me put Honorable um, Atoforsen's case on the back burner for now. Honorable Sunini, as you said, right in their adjoining constituencies, we've all seen what has happened. Barandi, you know what? We are tempted to believe, and the temptation is very, very strong, that the Electoral Commission did not expect the NDC to have dissected the register as I will have done. Because let's face it, and I've been told by some MPs that in fact we've not really, in the years past, paid detailed attention to the exhibition. Can we imagine if we did not? And Ghanaians report on December 7th to their known polling stations. And then somebody is intending to vote in and around Aitamale. And the person's vote is not there. 
and it's in Upper East. Can you imagine the security implications? Well, but some, some might say that that is the essence of uh, the exhibition. That is, that is very true. Mm. It's the essence of the exhibition. But let me show you something. When you go to Kolebu, there is a morgue, the mortuary. And there are also the wards. There are problems that only the morgue can resolve. And there are problems that can be resolved on the wards. It is the same hospital. We are saying that the tools available to resolve these heavy discrepancies that we have on earth, mere exhibition cannot address it. Because, look, didn't we have agents during the registration? We had agents there. Didn't we have agents during the transfers? And even when the EC deliberately stuck us from the registration centers and we insisted that our agents are stay there. With all the agents observing the processes and all, who would have expected that we were going to see uh, this kind of problem? We expect the kind of challenges to be solved by exhibition, to be wrong spelling of names, date of birth, um, maybe um, tests that are not well aligned. Sometimes there are even some people whose names are on the multiple register who actually did not register double, and I will explain. When you look at those multiple I registrations, you will realize that the two photos, the person is wearing the same attire, and the registration may just be about 30 minutes interval. In that case, the judgment, the value judgment is that hmm, it's possible the network went down and so the picture had already been captured. But then when the network was I restored, in trying to do the registration again, the person who was I registering did not realize that the, the, the earlier I registration had gone through. So some of these things, it's not everybody whose name is on the multiple register that when we go for adjudication, we just say that no, because you're on the multiple register, no. We look at the evidence and the context and everything. Some of these things can be addressed by the exhibition. But when you have a case where somebody went around to collect ID cards, the person has been arrested. And then you realize that subsequent to that, there have been transfers to a different region. That is more than what exhibition can address. There must be some insider dealing. When you have a case where biometric voter registration equipment have been stolen from the headquarters of the Electoral Commission of Ghana under CCTV surveillance with military and police protection, and we have always insisted that if somebody is able to steal these things in this high security zone, it means that the person or that group of thieves can interfere with the system. And we have such massive dislodgement of the database. We cannot just be relying on exhibition. That will mean trying to cure cancer. It's an anti-malaria drug. It will not work. Right, so, so yes, exhibition is supposed to address minor challenges and some major eye challenges. But what we are talking about are mega challenges, or if I should say, terror challenges. That mere exhibition not address. So, 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 Doc, it's been 48 hours since you wrote to the EC. What will be your next step? Are you engaging the other members? of IPAC, uh, have you engaged some of the parties? Do they share the concerns you have? We have engaged some of the parties, mm. and some of them are equally worried about the integrity of the register. 
And in terms of our next steps, I would say, let us hold that very close to our chest. Ghanaians, we are just saying that we are a peace-loving country. We are a peace-loving party. Our leader and flag bearer, President John Dramani Mahama, everybody knows him, his demeanor, his pedigree. Peace-loving person. Handed over power to the MPP in 2016. We have a situation where the certain president had been going around indicating who he wants to hand over to. Subverting the sovereign will of Ghanaians. The power to determine who governs us. And we know the MPP also professing that they are going to use strategy to win this election. And to put the Electoral Commission in contest, we know the antecedents of the people who occupy higher echelons of the Electoral Commission today and the circumstances that led to their occupying those high positions. And we know how some partisan appointments have been made. MPP communicators who have been appointed to serve on the commission and all. When you put all this together, you only arrive at a toxic tincture that must be exorcised. And we maintain that the Electoral Commission of Ghana must face serious investigation ahead of the election. Every peace loving Ghanaian. Every peace-loving institution, the clergy, traditional leaders, political parties, journalists, voters, we expect everybody to join in this noble and patriotic call for the Electoral Commission to open the system up if they have nothing to hide. In any case, this will not be the first time. In the year 2012, the Venerable Dr. Kojo Afarijan, under the NDC administration, when the MPP had cause to call for an audit of the register, Dr. Kojo Afarijan allowed it. Why won't the Electoral Commission allow it? Why won't the MPP be supporting this call for a forensic audit when there is a precedence? And in fact, if you relate the kind of discrepancies that we are talking about in 2024 to the discrepancies that we saw 12 years ago, then what was happening 12 years ago was child's play. But in the name of transparency, to give assurance to all stakeholders that President Mahama is a believer in democracy, that the Electoral Commission is independent, Dr. Kodri Afarijan opened the doors of the Electoral Commission for the register to be audited. Not that we have not raised the need for investigations into the register at IPAC. We have. Because as a parliament was failing us, we were also pushing at the level of IPAC. In fact, concerning the Electoral Commission's weakness, even in IT, I personally suggested that IPAC and the development partners were there, US, UK. CSO, CDD was there. I suggested that, look, let's contact UNDP for UNDP provide a technical support. To date, the Electoral Commission has not acted on it. So it is very clear that they are satisfied with the state of nature that is prevailing at the Electoral Commission. They are satisfied with the discrepancies in a mistaken belief that NDC will not have dissected the register, particularly as it was given to us less than 24 hours to the registration exercise. But we are a determined people. We shall not rest. We shall not falter. We shall not relent in ensuring we secure a free, fair, and transparent election on December 7, 2024. This country is bleeding. We will not allow an election 
that is compromised even ahead of the uh, December 7 polls. 